welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Eckelbarger. Happy day before Christmas Eve 2019. Get ready to smile with Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband. This is episode number 73 of the series, and it is entitled Liz Writes a Song. It originally aired on January 27th, 1950. For My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Yes, it's the Gay Family Series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers, it's evening. And Liz and George are entertaining George's boss, Mr. Atterbury, and his wife. (laughs) Dinner is over and the group is in the living room having coffee. Ah, nice dinner, Liz, girl. Oh, thanks, Mr. Atterbury. Well, what do we do tonight? Maybe there's something good on the radio. Radio? Yeah, you know, that little box you used to listen to before you got your television set. Oh, do do they still have those? (laughs) Well, if it'll make you happy, Mr. Atterbury, you and George go outside and look in through the window, and Iris and I will wrestle. (laughs) Touche. We'll try the radio. What a powerful set. You've got China. No, that's a popular song. Oh, it's a doula, Mexico, boola, bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. It'll do magic, believe it or not. Bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. Oh, yes. That's the popular song? Sure. Well, what does it mean? I don't know. I think it's Mary D. Goat sung sideways. <laughs> Put them together and what have you got? Uh, uh, turn that thing off. George, she's left with her bibbity bobbity hanging. <laughs> you cut off her boo. Oh, sorry. Boo. <laughs> what kind of a song is that? Bibbity bibbity boo. Yeah, it is kind of silly, isn't it? What's happened to the songwriters nowadays? When I was a young man, they had songs with words that meant something. Yeah. Rudolph, sing bo do de o do for them. <laughs> or that other great song, so full of meaning, digga digga do. <laughs> well, never mind. We had a lot of great songs in those days. Yeah, the old songs are the best songs. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. They don't write them like they used to. I'll never forget some of those wonderful tunes. Well, tell us all about it, Grandpappy. What did they used to sing in the Revolutionary War? <laughs> Rudolph couldn't hear the melody. He was playing the drum. <laughs> all right, you two can make fun if you want. But I'll never forget when Francis dances with me. Francis who? <laughs> it's a song, Lotus Bud. Uh. It was only second in popularity to the sheet of Araby. Your love belongs to me. Why, Miss uh, Atterbury, you're a crooner. Oh, uh, yeah, well. <laughs> as, uh, as a matter of fact, I used to be pretty good. In the old days, you'd always find me in the center of the largest group, playing the piano and leading the singing. <laughs> I used to love it singing parties, too. Yes, sir, that's my baby. No, sir, don't mean maybe. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Hey, I, I think we've just stumbled on what we'll do tonight. We'll gather around the piano and sing. Splendid. Hey, that'll be fun. Hey, that's a great idea. Come on over to the piano, Mr. Atterbury. You play and we'll sing. All right, all right. Yeah, what'll it be? Well, how about starting out with an easy one? Uh, when you wore a tulip. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's go. When you wore a tulip, a bright yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose. When the moon was resting, it was then heaven was me. What a blessing, no one knows. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. What's the matter? One of our songbirds has gravel in his beak. What do you mean, Rudolph? I detected several very sour notes. So did I. Well, so did I. Who was it? I'm not sure. Let's try it again and see. Okay. When, when you wore a tulip, a bright yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose. Oh, 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 oh. 
We aren't going on until we find who's singing off key. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Neither am I. Well, needless to say, I'm not doing it. Well, how can we find out who is? Well, I- I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll hit a note on the piano. We'll all sing it at one at a time. Like this. Now, Iris. George. Liz. (laughs) At ease, Mounties, we found our man. that I'm the one? Well, Liz, we sang the same note and you sang a different one. That, that proves something. Sure, you're all off key. <laughs> uh, look, Liz, we don't mean to hurt your feelings, but you do sing flat. I do not. Oh, now, it's nothing to get upset about. Some sing, some don't. <laughs> well, if you don't think I have a good voice, come over and sing with me when I'm taking a shower. Shall I bring my own towel? <laughs> Well, it was her idea. <laughs> Come on, let's sing something else. Yeah. Uh, uh, how about button up your overcoat? Fine. Yeah, uh, that's uh, a good one. Let's go now. Uh, uh, Liz. What? I'm, I don't know how to say this exactly, but this quartet has just become a trio. <laughs> I don't get to button up my overcoat? <laughs> no, honey. You get to button up your lips. Oh, being mean. Uh, I'm sorry, Liz, but there's no place for sentiment in group singing. A sour note is a sour note, even if it's your best friend. But who'll sing my part? Oh, we'll manage somehow. We just won't oil the piano stool. <laughs> oh, I'd like for you. Now, all together. But not your overcoat when the wind blows free. Take good care of yourself. You belong to me. Oh, nobody wants me. I'm going out in the garden and sing with the worms. Good morning, Liz. Well, if it isn't Al Jolson. Now, Liz. What time did Bing and Dinah go home? Well, if you're referring to Mr. Atterbury and Iris, they left about one o'clock. You know, and I certainly thought it was rude of you to go to bed while they were still here. Well, I don't care. I got a little sick after you buttoned up that crummy overcoat for the third time. <laughs> oh, what a story. Well, how would you like it if your husband and your best friend told you to shut up? Well, we didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It's so frustrating. There I was with all that music bottled up inside of me. And you wouldn't let me pull the cork. <laughs> oh, gee, Liz, I'm sorry. Well, but... Never mind the apology. It might not be too long before you'll beg me to join your tired little trio. What? Professor Krausmeyer's coming over this morning to give me singing lessons. Oh, no. You just wait. I'll be able to out-sing you with one tonsil tied behind my back. Well, that's a pretty picture. Well, I have to go to work now, dear. See you in Carnegie Hall. Well, I might not make that, but don't be surprised if I'm singing on the radio before long. Oh, Liz, television hasn't heard it that much. You'll see. I know I have talent. I'll make a deal with you, Liz. The day you sing on the radio, I'll roll an egg down Main Street with my nose. I'm going to hold you to that, George Cooper. So just remember it. What are you whispering about? I just thought if I'm going to be a singer, I have to save my voice. Oh, I guess. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm spraying my throat, Katie. All us singers do this. Oh? What's in the atomizer? Nothing. I don't know what I'm supposed to use yet. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, that must be Professor Krausmeyer. Oh, I'll let him in. Hello, Professor. To the mountain. Well, the house will be filled with music again. Nine? Nine. <laughs> Hello, Professor Krausmeyer. Ah, how is my pooper? And your pooper was poop. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of being made fun of, Professor. Are you sure you can teach me to sing? Oh, certainly. I have my own theory that if you can talk, you can sing. <laughs> Hit me the Z. <laughs> ah! 
Well, there goes another theory. <laughs> not get discouraged so soon. Ach, you're so right. Maybe the piano needs tuning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's try that again. Uh, there. That's amazing. <laughs> it isn't C, it isn't D. It also isn't E, F, G, A, or B. <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Cooper. You are the first human ever to sing X. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, 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 to show you what little sense I got, we go on with the lesson. Now, <laughs> uh, listen. Now, do you think you can do that? Sure. With your mouth, not your fingers. <laughs> Sing it. Oh. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. No, 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 no. <laughs> Supposed to be do re mi fa so la ti do. Well, that's just how I sang it. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, it ain't what you did; it's the way what you do this. <laughs> the, the, the tones are supposed to be bear shaped. Bear shaped? <laughs> yeah, bear made a purr. <laughs> Like this. How now, brown cow? <laughs> oh, the large end of the bear comes out first. <laughs> well, let me try it. How now, brown cow? Mrs. Cooper, did you hurt yourself? <laughs> no, Kitty, I'm all right. I thought a murder was going on. Mrs. Cooper, just sing something for me. Your favorite song, please. Well, uh, I guess it's Stardust. I love that song. <clears throat> uh, sometimes I wonder why I spend the lonely night dreaming of a song. The melody haunts my reverie. And I am one of no, 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 no. What's the matter? You love that song? Yes. I wouldn't want to hear you sing one you hate. You mean you don't think I have talent? Oh, no, please, please. Sit down, Mrs. Cooper. Now, look. The world of music is divided into two separate groups. The performers and the listeners. <laughs> Well, Professor Krausmeyer has broken the bad news to Liz that she will never be a nightingale. And she's still suffering from the shock. <laughs> What's the matter, Mrs. Cooper? Oh, Katie, I'm a musical flop. Now, you aren't either. I am, too. Professor Krausmeyer won't even teach me. He says I'm a listener. Well, you should do what my sister does. She writes songs and lets someone else sing them. Oh, you have to know all about music to write songs. Well, my sister doesn't know a thing. And maybe you heard that hit song she wrote. Think of your friends as bananas and count me as one of the bunch. <laughs> no, I don't think I ever heard that. Well, maybe you heard, I call my little boy tripod since he's grown another foot. <laughs> Those are hit songs. <laughs> They will be when she wins the songwriting contest she entered. It's on the local radio station. You mean a songwriting contest anyone can get into? Like your sister or, or you or me? Sure, they have it every week. Hey, this sounds like just what I'm looking for. Nobody can say I'm not musical if I'm writing hit songs. I should say they can. I'll try it. Get me the rhyming dictionary, Katie. Terry Jacob Cooper writes again. <laughs> Cooper, you've had your nose buried in that rhyming dictionary for two hours. Are you still working on that song? Yeah, I need a good rhyme. Lime, time, sublime, crime, time. What? 
Uh, oh, I've been looking at this so long, I've got rhymes on my brain. Pain, pain, complain, electric train. My goodness, Mrs. Pain. Cooper, stop! I'm crying, 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 Close crying. the book! Yeah, that's it, I'll close the book. Look, <clears throat> nook, look, look, nook, oh. Oh, well, I think I'm all right now. How's the song coming? Well, I've sort of got a tune, but the words won't come. Well, there's the door, I'll get it, Katie. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, hello, Mr. Wood. What can I do for you? Well, Casey told me that you entered a songwriting contest. I thought I might help you. You know, I used to write lots of songs for our college glee club. Of course, I don't have the time anymore. Well, Mr. Wood, we'd make a perfect songwriting team. You have talent and no time, and I have time and no talent. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Put her there, partner. A new team is born. Wood oh, and Cooper. Wood, Wood and Cooper. <laughs> That's better. Uh, well, now, let me see. Where will we begin, huh? Well, I got sort of a tune started, but I don't think it's any good. No, play it. Play it. Go ahead. Maybe we'll get an idea from it. All right. Just enough. It goes like this. <laughs> Just a minute, uh, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> no good, huh? Oh, no, no. I like it. Yes. <laughs> and I think some words that will fit to it just came to me. What are they? My country is a big, sweet land of liberty of the icing. My country... Oh, I wish I was dead. <laughs> Don't feel bad. All songwriters do that at first. They do? Oh, yes, I remember the first song that I wrote. After I wrote it, they told me I stole it from Tchaikovsky. <laughs> but I didn't. Well, that's good. No, I stole it from Freddie Martin. He stole it from Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Write one we don't steal from anyone. What's the matter? Are you crazy? We want a first song to be a success, don't we? Now we'll examine the hit songs of the past and take the best parts of each. Good idea. We better make it about a girl. Look at Margie, Dinah, Laura, Sweet Sue. And on the other hand, there should be a city in it, too. Look at Chicago, a Chattanooga Choo Choo. Meet me at Old St. Louis. Right. And it has to be Western. Western? Sure. Uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky, Mule Train. Right. Oh, this is easy. The song's practically all written. All we need is a girl who was born in a city and falls in love with a ghost rider who beats her with a whip. Let's get started. <laughs> down, Mrs. Cooper. You've been pacing up and down all afternoon. Oh, I can't help it, Katie. This is the day they decide on the winning song. Mr. Wood went down to see if he could find out anything ahead of time. Won't it be wonderful if you win? Oh, I'm afraid to think about it. Oh, I'll get it. Get away from that phone. Well, sorry, Katie. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Cooper. Our prize won first star. What? <laughs> Mr. Wood? We won! We won! Oh, really? I, I, I just talked to the head judge, and he said, in his 35 years as a musician. He's never heard a song like ours. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. We're going to sing it on the radio tonight. We? Well, the rules say we both have to appear. Look, you sing the song, and I'll just I'll just stand there and look pretty. Well, okay, Mrs. Cooper. Be at the radio station at 7 o'clock tonight. Well, don't worry. I'll meet you there. And I'll bring George in the goodbyes. Atterbury! I mean, uh, goodbye. Atterbury, Goodbye! <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, hi, Mr. Wood. Everything's all set. George and the Atterbury's are sitting in the audience. Is the program on the air already? No, not yet. Well, then why are you whispering? I'm not. I've got laryngitis. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wood, if you've got laryngitis, who's going to sing our song? Here's the music. Oh, no! No, I can't do it. No, you have to, or we won't win the prize. Oh, how can you do this to me? Now, don't worry. I'm going to help you. How? You'll sing, and I'll sit there and look pretty. <laughs> but I can't sing. I'm a natural-born listener. Come on, they're ready for it. You've got to go through with it. Oh. And here they come now, the winners of this week's Writer's Song Contest, Mrs. George Cooper and Mr. Benjamin Wood. Is there any secret you can give to prospective songwriters, Mrs. Cooper? Well, yes. Uh, we found that all you need to include is a girl's name, a city's name, a western feeling, love, and some double talk. Well, that's right from the horse's mouth, folks. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Figuratively speaking, of course. Now, I know you're all anxious to hear the song that won the contest, so let's get right to Mr. Wood, who will sing and play the original composition. Uh, Mr. Wood has laryngitis, so there's been a substitution. I'm going to sing the song. Oh, God! <laughs> all right, Miss Cooper, go ahead. Uh, wait a minute, Mrs. Cooper. Wait. Can't you sing louder than that? Sing louder? I'm shouting. Please, Mrs. Cooper, try to give us more volume. You'll be sorry! <laughs> you keep out of this, George. Oh, but Liz, you're laying an egg. Well, I may be laying a George Cooper, but you're going to roll it down Main Street with your nose. Oh, I forgot! Quiet, please! <laughs> Now, Mrs. Cooper, we have to hear your song so you can collect your prize. Uh, here, maybe I can sing it with you. Oh, would you? Do you think you'll know the tune? Well, it's tricky, but maybe it'll come to me. <laughs> okay. Once again, Mr. Wood. Oh, I've got a girl. Her first name is Pearl. She comes from Pittsburgh, VA. She looks like a witch. But her old name is Rich, and her last name is Yippee Kaye. Hell! Hell! Well, Yippee Kaye, whose little doggy are you? Do you hear the sweet rain as you drive the mule train? Can I muffle that man? I know. A pillow over his face. Ah, peace and quiet. See, it's quiet. It's too quiet. George, George, speak to me. Oh, what have I done? Say something. George, make a noise. Snore. Oh, what a beautiful sound. I won't say good night because he's asleep. Good night, Blair. My Favorite Husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Monday for another episode of My Favorite Husband and check in on Wednesday for the next installment of The Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope. Until next time, in the words of Salvador Dali, have no fear of perfection. You'll never reach it. <laughs>